A chosen people proclaim the mighty works of, God, of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Damien and Molokai. And as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father of mercy, who gave us in St. Damien a shining witness of love for the poorest and most abandoned, grant that by his intercession, as the faithful witnesses of the heart of your Son, Jesus, we too may be servants of the most needy and rejected. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves, the gate of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord. Of Felicia, Tyre, Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enthroned, enrolled, they, this man was born there. And all shall sing in their festive dance, My home is within you.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not among my flock, my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Continuing in our Gospel of St. John, chapter 10, with this uh, Good Shepherd discourse. Today we listen to the gospel that happened, um, uh, that we read, half of this was read this past Sunday. Interesting line, again, that our Lord says when speaking about ourselves, right, part of his flock, his sheep, right? No one can take them out of my hand. Of course, there's a figure of speech that he's using, uh, just like in the first reading, it says the hand of the Lord right, was with them. But what exactly does that mean? No one can take them out of my hand. You know, when I, I was looking at this gospel this morning, I was reminded of, um, you know, think about the hands of Jesus at this point. Right? What, what did Jesus do? When he came to the apostles on that Easter Sunday afternoon or that evening when he appeared to them, right, he showed them uh, the five wounds that he still had. Right? And two of those wounds, of course, are in his hands. He continued to have the wounds of his passion. Even though he was in his resurrected body, right, and had been, had been risen from the dead, and all the scars from the scourging, I assume, were not there, and the, 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 the marks from uh, the, thorn, the thorns were not there, but he left these five wounds um, within his, his resurrected body as a reminder, right? It's really a reminder of, of his love. Right, as a reminder of what he has endured, right, for our salvation. So I was thinking about that, and I was, I don't know if many of you have heard uh, the beautiful, it's a beautiful prayer, the Anima Christi, right, which is, is the soul of Christ. Commonly it's prayed, like after one receives the Eucharist. Um, but it speaks um, very beautifully about one line. It, it says this Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water, from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Within your wounds, hide me. And again, it sounds kind of strange, but it's like being safe within the wounds of Christ, right, from the the poison of sin, right, from the poison of death, that I'm being, I'm hidden within the wounds of Christ. And I think about that as I was reading that line, no one can take them out of my hand, right, that we are in the hand of Christ. We are within his wounds as long as we allow him to hold us. I mentioned this past Sunday, I, I the image, for those who were at my Mass, that, that meme right, where Jesus is like arm-wrestling Satan. And I don't like that meme at all because it, it, uh, it, 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 it can be drawn to the conclusion that Satan and, and Jesus are equal in power, right? They have the same kind of power, and they're going back and forth like an arm wrestle, which is, of course, a complete, um, a complete fallacy, right? There's no way. Satan has no power over Jesus at all, right? And so Satan cannot even take us out of the Christ hands. Nothing can take us out from that wound within his own hand. Nothing can take us out from his love and mercy. The only one that can right, is ourselves, right? The sheep can only stay within the hands of the shepherd as long as the sheep is willing, right, to follow the shepherd. But as soon as the sheep decides, right, I don't want to, 
I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to make other things my own God, right? To sin against the Lord mortally, right? Deathly, deathful, deathful sin, deathly sin, if you will, is what mortal sin is, right? Well, then the Lord respects our free will, right? And he lets us go. He lets us go. Of course, he's always going to pursue us. He's going to be pursuing us to get us to turn back, to repent to him, right? To come back into his hand, right? To come back to be safe within his wounds, but nothing outside of our own free will in the end. Again, Satan can tempt us. He can do everything he can, but it boils down to our free will choosing, right, to walk outside of his hands, right, to let, to allow him, not to allow him, but um, uh, to allow, yeah, to allow him to let us go, right, within his own hand. Um, so no one can take them out of my hand, right? That's our place of safety. That's our place of safety. That's our place of comfort, if you will. It gives us peace in the heart, right? Just like um, a child who's in the arms or in the hands of his father, right, or her father, they feel safe that no matter what's happening around them, no matter what circumstances may be surrounding their situation, they are safe at heart. This is what brings us peace. This is what brings us ultimate peace that the world can't offer, but only God can offer to us. No one can take us out of my hand. We're placed in the wounds of Christ, and I pray that all of us may stay there, may stay within his wounds, be safe from whatever may attempt to harm us, if you will, may tempt us to, to walk outside, right, of our Lord's will, to quit, continue following him, because no one can take us out except our own selves. And so may God bless you today, and may God be with you. Amen. Through the intercession today of St. Damien, we entrust to the Lord our petitions and our prayers. We pray uh, for our church, that she may be an instrument of proclaiming the mercy of our Lord to those who desire it, to those who, who, who need it within their own lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves that we may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and follow him wherever he may lead us. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for our world, um, for peace in the hearts of those um, who are filled with anger, those who are filled uh, with uh, rage or frustration. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for greater respect in human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for all of uh, those who are sick, those who are undergoing uh, major surgery. We pray for all those who are called to serve the sick in any way. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning and for all of our beloved deceased family and friends and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good Shepherd, we come before you. We place ourselves in your loving hands, in your wounds, Lord, help us never to leave that place of comfort and safety and protection as we entrust to you these petitions and prayers through the intercession of our saint today, Saint Damien. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, press your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Damien of Molokai, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I will pasture my sheep, and I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray.
Hear, O Lord, our prayers that the most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and in, in, ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. And have a wonderful day today.